I have a weekly report in Excel with a lot of great stats that are hand entered each week. My gosh, that must be really time consuming and I hope you're not paying for this by the hour. The weeks are in columns across the top and I have a separate tab for each of my five business locations. How do I get performance trends over time from this? Yes, yeah, spectacular question. The answer is you don't. You're not gonna get performance trends over time with, with information on five separate tabs for five separate business locations with statistics entered here, there, and everywhere. The answer to your question is that this, or, this data needs to be organized into one database. And from that database, I can feel like my geek vibes right now. From that database, you're going to use some amazing and super easy to use tools like pivot tables, timelines, slicer, pivot charts. And really in about 30 seconds or less, you can get the most amazing insights about your business that you've ever had in your life. So what is this whole thing about organizing it into a database? A database as illustrated like this because because this is this is my secret sign for database it's a solid block of data it looks like a rectangle there are no spaces in between it's not something that goes on to the right for um with especially if it has spaces between it which is not even analyzable a database has is a series of columns next to each other with no spaces and a series of rows with no spaces. I mean, the occasional blank cell, you're okay. But no blank rows. And every column has a column header, like date or location or category, description, amount, quantity, other descriptors. Those are, those are the column headers. And in every row, you have what's called a record Okay, jargon alert, jargon alert. It's called a record, a row in a database. So you might say, um, oh, pick a random city. And you might say location city. Like that's where one of your business locations is. Let's say Naples. So you have a business location in Naples. So you say location, Naples. And then you might say statistics. How about gross revenue? So you put um, category, gross revenue. Amount, and you put whatever the amount is, $5 million. Date, maybe it's a day of the week, maybe it's a weekended date, maybe these are weekly statistics. So that's what, what, we, what do we have in the fact pattern here? The weeks, it's a week, so you might say weekend. So if your weeks end, let's say on Saturday, you put a Saturday date. Week ended 11 25 17, for example, that was a Saturday. So you have all of these um, pieces of information, all of these attributes about one record, and just, I mean, it can go down forever. Excel, a single Excel spreadsheet can have a million rows, over a million rows in it. It's like two to the whatever power. Um, so if you're a small not-for-profit or a small business, you're not gonna run out of space anytime soon. Um, so that's how you can populate the data. That's how you can organize the data. You must organize it this way in order to get some amazing um, things like performance trends. Now, it's a separate question which wasn't asked here, so I'm not going to bore you with the answer, but of what should be included in a dashboard of weekly statistics. If anybody wants to know, we can have a chat about that. That is definitely not a generic answer, but there are some principles to follow. So if anybody wants to know, ask. I'll give you my opinion because this is Ask the CFO. And being a CFO on the call, I get to give opinions. If, by the way, there is anyone else on the call who has facts or opinions about anything we're discussing today, please feel free to post a comment. I'm watching. Um, and if I know you, I'll give you a shout out. So uh, that's my answer to your question. Now, what's all this with pivot tables, slicers, pivot charts, etc.? Oh my gosh. Seriously? Um, a couple days ago, I built out a dashboard that was powered with um, a table and pivot tables and a pivot chart and slicers. And we got a serious wow moment. And the biggest thing that came from this is, my gosh, with trends like that, we have to make sure that the employees are being treated fairly and not being underpaid. And two, we have to make sure that no one's committing fraud. 
That's the kind of insight. But don't shy away from it. Step into it. Embrace it. Because you work very hard every day and you don't want anybody in your circle being treated unfairly or subject to fraud. And yeah, it can feel uncomfortable, but go for it. Don't shy away from it. Um, pivot tables summarize detailed information. And they become possible and easy. I mean, really easy. Not just because Jamie's saying it. Trust me. It's easy. They can, um, you can get that information and it's all super easy to get when the underlying information is in a database, as I described. So you go drag and drop, drag and drop, total X by Y, total revenue by location, total quantity by a weekended date, um, total category line item by, um, by location. And if you, if you want this visually, you can pit two of your five business locations against each other and check out weekly trends in profitability or revenue or average employee pay rate as, as a percent of total revenue. You can track that, pit two locations against each other. You can even create a little competition if you think that's something that can inspire your leaders, your business leaders in each location to, um, to continue to perform. So those are some of the goods that can come from a dashboard like this. Um, so remember these terms, pivot table, database, slicers, pivot chart, timeline. If you want to know more about any of those, feel free to message me or we can set up a call.